Hi there. Um, my name is Rogério Richa. I'm a researcher uh, from the National Institute for uh, Digital Convergence in Florianopolis, Brazil. And in this series of videos, I'll present a short tutorial on uh, direct visual tracking. So I'll, here I'll talk about the fundamental uh, aspects of direct visual tracking with a special focus on gradient-based methods. So I'll talk, I'll give a detailed mathematical derivation of the lucas Canati framework and also discuss some interesting aspects of its uh, implementation both on the CPU and the GPU. So this material is part of a tutorial organized by Professor uh, Adrien Bartoli. I've presented this last September at the ICIT in Clermont-Ferrand, France with uh, my colleague uh, Raphael Snitman. So um, this is how the tutorial is going to be organized. It's divided in three parts. Um, in this video, I'll talk about the fundamental assumptions behind uh, direct visual tracking. And uh, in part two, I'll give a detailed uh, derivation of the lucas Canati framework. So part two is going to be interesting for those who are not familiar with uh, this type of technique and wish to see a more uh, uh, detailed step-by-step -step derivation of the method. And in part three, I'll talk about implementation details. So I'll discuss my uh, some of my C++ implementation of these methods, and uh, I'll talk about CPU optimizations with OpenMP, and hopefully I'll have some time to include some CUDA code as well for tracking on the GPU. So let's begin with uh, a discussion on visual tracking. Well, visual tracking uh, also referred to as um, object tracking or video tracking can be formulated as the problem of estimating the trajectory of a target object in a scene using visual information. Well, visual information um, can come from different imaging sources. Uh, so we can use optical cameras, uh, thermal cameras, ultrasound, uh, x-ray or magnetic resonance. And uh, visual tracking is a very hot topic because it has applications in, in a huge variety of problems such as, for instance, uh, human-computer interaction, robotics, augmented reality, well, in medicine, and the military, just to cite a few. Okay, so how can we uh, classify uh, solutions available today? Um, Ilmas, um, in his survey on object tracking in, uh, that he published in 2006, he proposed a very interesting um, classification. Um, they chose to classify uh, visual tracking methods uh, based on four principal components. The target representation, the appearance model, uh, the motion model for the target object, and the search strategy. So let's look at these components in more detail, starting with the target uh, representation. So Ilma has collected uh, several typical target representations used in the literature. And he identified a few, uh, such as centroids, reference points, uh, bounding boxes, um, skeletons, um, silhouettes. But among these, um, the bounding box uh, is by far the most common. And, um, and this is because the bounding box can easily define uh, a very large variety of obje objects. And um, it's also for this reason that we're going to use it as our uh, default target representation throughout this uh, tutorial. Okay, so we saw ways of representing a target. So now let's look at how to model uh, its appearance. Well, so the idea behind the appearance model is to describe the target object based on the available visual information. So a good, a suitable appearance model is a discriminative uh, model. So for instance, uh, in this case here, where the players uh, wearing a, an orange uniform are running around on a green field, the color histogram of the bounding box um, defining the, the target player is sufficiently unique to differentiate it from the background. Well, we can also, we could also use the reference image itself um, as an appearance model. So in this case, the target object is described as a set of pixel intensities or uh, pixel colors. 
Um, we could also represent the target as, as a result of a filter bank uh, computed based on the original pixel intensity values. So we can use distribution fields as well as a, um, an appearance model. Um, and um, another very popular uh, appearance model are uh, image features. So based on the uh, reference image of the target object, a set of uh, distinguishable features can be computed uh, in order to represent uh, the target. In certain cases, the subspace of the reference image is used to model the uh, object's uh, appearance. These more sophisticated uh, models have proven to be very useful in situations where the appearance of the tracked object varies in time. And also in cases where the target object is partially occluded. A principal component analysis and dictionary-based uh, approaches are often uh, employed in this uh, context. In this video, in this uh, first part of the tutorial, I'll focus on the first types of appearance models, uh, which are often used in region-based tracking. And um, I'll leave feature-based tracking and subspace uh, uh, methods for another uh, video. Okay, so um, region-based uh, tracking comes from the idea of tracking a region, a portion of an image. So let's remember that we chose to represent uh, a target object by a bounding box. In order to track the object uh, contained within the uh, bounding box, we need to define a suitable appearance model, which in this case here of this uh, plush toy, it can be uh, the raw pixel intensities in grayscale. So now that we have adopted an uh, appearance model for our target object, we need to model uh, its motion and the scene. So that means that the tracking problem becomes the problem of finding the parameters of this motion model that uh, maximizes the similarity between the reference and current images of the target object. For instance, let's assume that my target object only moves in the horizontal and vertical directions in the scene. In this case, a very simple translational model with only two uh, parameters, two offsets, is sufficient to model the position of my reference image in the scene. Naturally, if the target object moves in more complex ways, then we need to adjust and use more complex uh, transformation models with additional degrees of freedom. For instance, if we're tracking a book cover, then we must use a projective model which has eight degrees of freedom. And uh, of course, if the target object is not rigid, if it's deformable, then we need to use a deformable model. Uh, we could use, for instance, uh, a B-spline or a thin place spline to correctly describe the object's uh, deformation. So another particular aspect of direct methods is that in practice, we often use the positions of the target object in the previous frames to initialize the search for its current position. So given the parameters P uh, of my motion model at a previous uh, frame uh, T minus uh, one, our task is to find the new parameters P which best uh, matches the reference and current images. And this leads us to a very, uh, very interesting question. So what exactly is the best match for the two images, the reference and current images. Well, finding the best match means finding the portion of the current image that is most similar to the reference image. So that means we have to choose a similarity function. So in the literature, um, several uh, alternatives have been um, used. So for instance, we have the sum of absolute differences, um, the sum of square differences, the normalized cross-correlation, um, the mutual information, and this is just to name a few. The structural uh, similarity index that's used in uh, compression. Um, you can click on the link on the video for uh, a more detailed uh, description of these me measures and uh, their properties. So we have uh, 
learned that for tracking we need to choose an appearance